Good day, my Charles Street family. This is my second day reporting to you uh, from the old city of Jerusalem. And today, uh, I'm now standing in front of one of the main entrances to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, also known across the world as the Church of the uh, Resurrection. This uh, church uh, has been built, destroyed by fire, and then destroyed by earthquakes uh, several times, going all the way back uh, to the first millennium. And I think the current structure that still exists uh, dates back to a little before 1100 um, AD, which makes this building, this edifice, over a thousand years. This is the site that many believers uh, claim uh, with increasing um, you know, evidence and data that Jesus Christ um, was crucified. Here is where Calvary stood. And also, uh, this is the site of his resurrection because the empty tomb is located in this building. In addition to many uh, believers claiming that this is the site where Jesus eventually ascended into heaven, where his uh, disciples uh, saw him uh, ascend uh, to heaven, telling them that he would one day return to them and that in just a short while, uh, they would receive uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is a holy pilgrimage place for Christians. Uh, this is perhaps uh, besides the Vatican for the Roman Catholic Church, but for many, many, many other Christians by the hundreds of millions, this is perhaps the, the holiest of the most sacred place where uh, every year uh, millions of Christians uh, travel here to pay their pilgrimage and to uh, see the very site of Jesus' crucifixion and the site of his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. We're gonna go into uh, the church now, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Hopefully they will allow me to take some pictures and to continue to talk to you as I approach those sites. All right, hold on. So right here is the, the actual stone that uh, centuries and centuries uh, scholars believe Jesus was found and placed upon after his crucifixion. So after he died and he was um, on, on lying down for a while, he was on a stone. And this is the stone. And people come from all over the world to just lay their hands on the stone and to touch it. So I'm going to do the same thing. Hopefully you can see it. As I lay my hand, thanking God that, thanking Christ that I was able to touch the very stone where he was found after he was crucified. More to come. This again is the very stone where Jesus lay after he was crucified and before he was buried. So you saw a few moments ago uh, the, the slab of stone where Jesus was laid and that's where they prepared his body for the burial. It's called the Stone of the Unction. And in a few minutes, we'll be able to go into a tomb um, where the women on the third day went to visit Jesus to finish preparing for his burial. And he was not there. Uh, the tomb involves actually two rooms. First, you'll see a piece of the stone. It's called the Stone of the Angel. Uh, and that was the stone that blocked tomb, a piece of that stone you'll see, and then we'll go into the second room, which actually is where Jesus is put to rest, the empty tomb. It's a long, long line to get into uh, these two rooms, but I should be able to get in in a few moments. All right, stay tuned. 
Unfortunately, they did not allow, they did not allow individuals uh, to take photos of the actual tomb. But let me see if I can get it close so you can see it from the outside. Hold on. Actually, this is where I should have started the, the, the tour because this is the very spot where Jesus was crucified. Uh, and so let me show you it now and you will see the actual, the actual location that changed the course of humanity forever, brought us closer to God and invited us into an eternal relationship with our Lord and Savior, through our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, the crucified uh, Savior of the world. Hold on and I'll show you a, a better picture of it in one second. Here it is. This is where he's laid to be crucified. Calvary. Still see some of the original stones at the time of his resurrection, of his crucifixion. As you know, Jesus was not uh, crucified and buried uh, in a church or in a structure that we have now. This uh, church of the Holy Sepulchre was built uh, a thousand years later and it actually in, encloses uh, the site where Jesus was crucified, where he was uh, laid uh, and prepared for his burial on that stone, and then where he was actually placed in the tomb and on the third day where the women found the tomb empty. The Church of the Sepulchre actually is uh, administered and governed by six uh, Eastern and Western denominations, and they all have a responsibility for the maintenance of the facility. Those denominations include the Roman Catholic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Armenian Apostolic Church, the Syriac Orthodox Church, and the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox, Orthodox Church. I think I forgot one. But right now we're in uh, the praying room of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And uh, I'm just gonna show you so you can get a chance to, to see it. I think one of the Ethiopian uh, priests is, is praying now. This is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. It's the praying room where they gather. Here is the little pieces where you don't want to disturb this time of God. And here he is. I'm not sure if I mentioned, uh, as I'm on my way to uh, the West Wall, I'm, I'm kind of lost, but I'll, no, I'll find my way. But I, I said yesterday that there were four major quarters that represent the old uh, Jerusalem, the old city. That's the Christian quarter, the Armenian quarter, the uh, Muslim or Islamic quarter, and the Jewish quarter. How you get from one quarter to the next quarter, uh, there are multiple and multiple of small alleys that you have to walk through. And in each of the alleys, there are uh, thousands and thousands of markets, small markets. Uh, I think right now we're standing in one of the Muslim markets, but interestingly enough, uh, they're selling uh, artifacts and things that uh, Jews might need for their holy, high holy days. And they have plenty of stores where there are crosses uh, for Christians and Bibles for Christians to purchase. Even in a Muslim uh, controlled um, marketplace. So you'll find that, that even though they're, uh, they're controlled by the certain faith, 
but the commerce and the business and what the merchandise that they sell are they're reaching out to persons of all faiths and i'm going to quickly show you one or a few stores just give me a second here's one store a muslim store which has so many beautiful you can see for Jews and for uh, Christians. How are you? I'm good. What about you? Good, good. I just want to thank you so much for letting me see your store. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. And here's another store. Let's see. Another. Another. Look at these beautiful scarves. I have to one grass tomorrow. Here's another Muslim store. Let's see the star. David, candles. Okay, now I'm going to find out where that wall is. Here is the Western Wall. More to come in just a few seconds. So we are now at the, uh, the Jewish in the Jewish quarter, and we're getting ready to go to. Jewish wall that is known on the interior as the praying wall and uh, because it's a, a Jewish wall uh, every male must wear uh, a yarmulke or a what they call kap kapor so either yarmulke or kapor and so as you can see I'm grabbing one and I have to put one on my head as well and I'm on my way now to uh, the wall to pray, pray for, I'm going to be praying for our sick and shut in members of Child Street and all those who have lost loved ones as well. Here is where the side of the gate where the women are. Well, this concludes our tour of the, uh, of the great uh, old Jerusalem. We went and we saw the church of the Holy Sepulchre, again where Jesus was crucified, where he was prepared for his burial, and where his tomb was empty when the woman went to see him. We went and saw the praying wall where many persons uh, of the Jewish faith and others uh, left their prayers written out through the cracks of the wall. I tried to get to the Muslim um, quarter, but I discovered that uh, non-Muslims can only go on Saturdays and Sundays and only at certain hours, so I will try to get to that again. I hope that you have enjoyed uh, this this uh, video clipping. You might hear a, uh, someone playing the harp. Uh, she's next to me and she's doing a great job. Let me see if I can show you a picture of her. There she is. And uh, so I'll, I'll see you again uh, tomorrow. And we must really talk about uh, the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict and the tension. Uh, I haven't talked much about that with you, but uh, there's so much to talk about. It's a very, very complex, complicated uh, history. But uh, in the name of justice, in the name of a God who we believe sides with those who are oppressed, it is important that we really have a good frank discussion, particularly about Israel's role in uh, some of the real major events in modern history when Israel perhaps stood on the wrong side uh, of the issue, particularly with apartheid and supporting the South African uh, regime that oppressed our people. And then even how Israel is uh, not strongly supporting the Ukrainian people, but uh, is sort of being controlled by Russia, but so many other things. And we'll talk about, um, again, the Palestinians and their many years of being oppressed, persecuted, land being taken away from them. And we'll also talk about the Israeli side as well, because I think both sides are, um, are important to know about, are important to understand, however complicated the issues are. Uh, we want to be fair and just. But most of all, we want to speak justice. Okay, it's approaching 5 p.m. 
on, uh, which makes it, I believe, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, your time on Thursday, August 4th. And I wish you a blessed day. I'm speaking from, uh, again, the Jaffa Gate. And I'm getting ready to leave the old city. Uh, we'll go to an Arab market tomorrow. You will really find that very interesting. And I'm also going to try to get to Bethlehem and to see the nativity scene as well uh, sometime over the weekend. But until then, God bless you. I love you. And this is uh, Reverend Greg Ruver reporting from WCSAME in Jerusalem. And now, back to you, Linda.